Welcome to the HCI Family of Podcasts, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We share our own original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. Join us for practitioner-oriented content around all things leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with the HCI family of podcasts. Maria Kellis, welcome to the conversation today. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from the San Francisco area. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about aligning your career with your personal goals. This is a really important topic. I think we all strive to find meaning and purpose in the work that we do. We spend so much of our waking hours doing work, you know, in our careers. And, you know, for many of us, it's it's by far the vast majority of our waking hours that we're, we're spending in the workplace. So we want it to matter. Um, and, and part of that, you know, I think just really falls on the foundation of like, what are our values? Do we know what those values are? And, and are we able to find alignment uh, with what we're doing? And I, I don't want to disparage anybody. Like, I don't think there's any dishonorable work. I, I think if you if you're putting food on the table, if you're putting a roof over your head, and if you're taking care of your family, you know, I think that's honorable. I think that's fantastic. Um, but whenever possible, if you can find work that that brings out your passions and that can align directly with your values, I think that's all the better. I think that's going to bring out the best in you uh, and it's going to be the best for you, your team and your organization. So we're going to explore this together today and I'm excited to have a chance to chat with you. As we get started, I wanted to share Maria's bio with everybody. Maria Kellis is a celebrated strategist, mentor and business consultant blending technology and spirituality to help individuals and organizations realize their full potential. With a background in both tech startups and spiritual healing, Maria has forged a unique perspective on both worlds, empowering individuals to work in alignment with their values and purpose. Over the years, she has collaborated with various companies, assisting in their growth while ensuring well-being remains a focal point. Again, I think that's fantastic. I think that's really important that we keep um, all aspects and our holistic well-being in mind as we pursue our life's goals. Um, Maria, anything you would like to add by way of your background or personal context before we dive on in sure. further? I absolutely. And uh, it's interesting today. I am in San Francisco as I'm talking to you. And usually I live around the world. I, I, I live between seven countries and mm -hmm. uh, I, I have created a life because I chose this life. And this is, we, we often talk about life by design versus life by, by default. And uh, I have finally gotten to that point in my life where I realized that our values are what makes work fun. And, and I really want to stress this enjoyment principle in here because it took me all my life to understand. It took me decades to understand this. Um, when we do, I, I used to think that we do work for work and earning money and and being right and doing what is expected of us. And then we do our hobbies and what we enjoy as a side project. And mm -hmm. uh, it took me years to realize that it doesn't fulfill us that way. And it becomes draining. It takes part of us. Um, that's what creates disease. That's what creates stress. That's what creates dissatisfaction. When we find our, and and I know it sounds funny to call this alignment, but yes, alignment with our values, with ourselves, with our purpose, with our passions, then we operate in a very different way. Work becomes fun. Work becomes this place that we go to, to, to do what we want to do. And uh, then we are not counting the hours for work to be over. We are excited to be where we are and then the more we align ourselves the better overall we end up being 
Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And again, just the word alignment is something that's very powerful and meaningful to me. I, I think in life in general, finding alignment is very important. And whether we're talking about, you know, physically like skeletal alignment, you know, in terms of posture, I think that's, that's important. And anyone who's ever had any sort of like back pain, you know, how important alignment is <laughs> in terms of your back alignment. Um, you know, as an example. Um, so, so finding just alignment in, in the different aspects of your life is going to be important. And, and I like that analogy, um, finding alignment between your, your values, finding alignment between your purpose and in the, and what you spend your time and energy doing, you know, I think is, is very meaningful. And I want to highlight what you said, like it's taken you decades to get there. Um, this, this is not something that, you like nobody needs to feel like bad or guilty or shamed or anything like that because they're feeling like they're not there or they haven't arrived or anything like that. Yeah. I think it's a life lifelong journey, you know, like we're all trying to find alignment. I think that's kind of in part the purpose of life is to find alignment. Um, I also think that alignment today might look a little different than alignment tomorrow um, for me because at different points in my life, you know, there, there are different aspects of my life that require different aspects of me, you know, different stages of life, different stages of my career, um, different, you know, stages of my family, et cetera, you know, life stages, family stages, career stages, et cetera. Um, and so alignment shifts just like my life stage shifts. And, and I think it's, it's an ever, ongoing process that we we practice self-reflection we we um, try to find that alignment and and just the exercise of trying to better understand who we are where we're at where we're going i think all that's super powerful um and and i i just love it so i think going and through that process you, and you trying up, to figure that out is 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 wonderful you brought up a very important point about everything is shifting the only constant in life is change. And uh, when, it, it, again, took me a long time to realize that, but we are always, uh, as humans, or at least I used to, always try to hold on to this perfect picture of what life should be like and, uh, and trying to get there. And I realized life happens in the moment. It happens and constantly that moment is shifting. So change is part of life. Um, there, there's a great uh, wise man uh, called Buck, Mr. Fuller from the last century, and he's talking about something called precession. The, this idea that bodies in motion always uh, attract what we want. And uh, I, I knew this and it took me, again, years, uh, to find out something that could um, show me what that means. Like, so I could put words into it and I could practice because all these principles that we will talk about today, um, they're very, sometimes can be esoteric and mm. they're very deep. And I believe that what people need are very practical applications, tools that they can use today in their lives so they can be a little bit more in alignment because I can tell you when I started on this journey, people will say, oh, you just need to love yourself more and to be more in balance and, uh, and to accept yourself and to, and I was like, what does that even mean? I don't mm -hmm. even know where to begin to start. So um, when we talk about alignment, what it means is that we know ourselves, we know our value, we are what we say congruent. Congruent means that I know that I like to be healthy. And so that means that when I have the opportunity to do something good for myself, then I choose that. If I have the mm -hmm. choice between eating salad or eating uh, a very highly processed meal that uh, that is probably full of something that uh, I, I can't even pronounce, I'm going to choose the salad. And that is many, many choices that I make. So we can choose what is our values. 
we we really choose that and if it's not our values we'll know really quickly because we'll say well it doesn't feel good well then it's not aligned so use yourself as the person as the measure stick so yeah. if being healthy means that you feel good about yourself then great if if you feel miserable and you are absolutely stressing out about doing things right and you're creating conflict in your life you're not in alignment don't kid yourself that oh i'm following all the rules uh uh you're not doing this right so go back to what feels right and we are very smart people and at the same time we're human and this takes care of both of our sides you were asking me a little bit about my background well i have 3 degrees from mit mechanical engineering the Sloan School of Management, and uh, a joint master's in product development. Uh, I even worked at the MIT Media Lab. So I come from a world of exact technology, science, and it took me many, many, many years to understand that there's more to being human than just that, just being smart, just achieving. We, now with the AI, and it's a very relevant conversation because AI is just starting. Whatever we were seeing that in in the nineties with uh, uh, the internet just starting, we're seeing now with AI just starting, and it's becoming a part of our lives more and more. And it's only going to accelerate jobs that we used to suffer through. I at least I suffered through a lot of things. <laughs> now they happen in five minutes with AI. And mm -hmm. our job is to find the tools that will help us facilitate and accelerate our, our menial tasks almost so we can really be ourselves. So the more we are being asked to be ourselves, well, the more it becomes relevant to know who you are and to be in alignment with yourself, with your principles. People are scared, oh, will AI take over the world and take over my job? The answer is absolutely not. When you're becoming the best version of yourself, the most valuable version of yourself, then AI has nothing on you because it's just a machine. It's it, it's almost as if you're asking, well, will the calculator take over my job? Well, if your job was to do addition, probably yes. But if your job was to check numbers and make sure that everything happens correctly, it won't. It cannot mm -hmm. because you're not replaceable. And this is very, very important to realize. AI is here to help us. AI is here to improve us, to accentuate us, to accelerate things. Well, who are you to accelerate you? Because we accelerate you in the wrong platform, then you're probably going to fall off the tracks because you're not balanced enough to stay on track. Yeah, uh, th those are some really fantastic points. And and I want to highlight, you know, again, this alignment piece that you you've articulated in relation to AI too. Like we often talk about AI will take over the menial tasks, the repetitive tasks, the things that we don't like to do anyways, right? Um, the parts of my job that I would rather not do, it can be automated. Um, I can have AI do it, whatever, right? That's, in fact, I think that sounds really nice <laughs> that they don't have to do those things anymore. Um, we often frame it as like the less, the, the non-human things, like the, the I, I, it'll free up time for me to do the more human things. So the less human things, you know, technology can take care of. Um, and so I think about like what makes me human, right? And, and that comes back to these values, like the, in this alignment, um, there, I just yesterday, I I, um, I I forget the gentleman's name, um, but his book just came out in the U.S. just last week. Um, Atomic Human is the name of the book. It's all about uh, AI and society, and and um, the the general premise is exactly this. You know, uh, what um, what does AI mean for the future of humanity and for society, and what piece of humanity is, is always going to be there that can't you know, be taken over by technology. Um, and that's an ongoing question and debate. And his premise is essentially, we have no idea. It's anybody's guess. Like, we just don't know. Like, he he doesn't believe in like the big um, utopian um, pronostications. He doesn't believe in the dystopian pronostications. He just, he thinks like, 
we literally have no idea. Like we haven't conceived of what's going to happen in the the future due to all these disruptive technologies and the and the AI disruption. Um, but it all comes back to this this innate humanness in this alignment of our values. Um, bringing it back to the workplace as well. In 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 the academic research and literature around values there there's there are these constructs that we look at um around person organization fit person job fit uh values congruence these are very specific um constructs and terms that we use in the organizational space in the organizational psychology space um to get at exactly what you're talking about just specifically in the organizational context um and there's tons of research to back this up. So lots and lots of academic research that shows when you have higher levels of values congruence, work organization fit, person organization fit, team organization fit, et cetera, like when that congruence happens, when that alignment happens, it, it leads to all sorts of more positive outcomes for everybody, for the individual worker, for the team, for the organization, for the customer, you know, for innovation, for, you know, stock value, for like everything, like all the different things that you want to have happen, you know, improve when you have better alignment. Um, not to mention just on a human level, the individual has more satisfaction. They find more meaning and purpose. They, you know, they get more excited. They have more motivation, like all those things. And so there, there's like from a business case perspective, like there's zero doubt in my mind that alignment is key. From a human case perspective, there's zero doubt in my mind that alignment is key. Like we want and we need alignment. And so leaders need to be really thinking about this. Like how do we find alignment? How do we hire for alignment? How do we, once we get people on the team, how do we manage and lead towards alignment? How do we train and 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 do performance management towards alignment? How do we support people to do their own like self-reflective practices um, towards alignment? All of this, I think, needs to really be at the forefront of what we do as leaders because it matters. It matters a lot. Yeah, I I've been in the startup space most of my career, and uh, we I, I I always mentor and support new startups, and uh, um, I'm always involved in in. Uh, in spaces, I, I'm part of this ecosystem where organizations grow. There's a choice point always for somebody. Are we going in this direction or another direction? Um, we uh, we we were discussing about the difference in uh, in um, in the startups in uh, in Thailand, for example, where the culture is "don't make mistakes." To yeah. um, Vietnam, that is closer to China, where it's go big or go home is the mm. back principle. And uh, and we realize that this means that we are producing more startups Vietnam and in countries where people are willing to replicate this model of go big and go home. There's no shame in failure. Just keep doing this. You'll get it right. And uh, even though it sounds really good on paper, in practice, how do you take people who come from a culture that may not reward this risk-taking behavior and, and still allow them to take risks. And it's by finding the things that matter. So when we find, um, what does it mean to know yourself? What does it mean to be self-aware? Well, it means that you accept and know your strengths as much as you accept and know your weaknesses. Mm. One of my strengths is that I'm very creative. And one of my weaknesses is that I'm very creative. So <laughs> it means that I love to be challenged. I love to be um, excited. I love adventure. And at the same time, that means that I get bored very easily because mm. once I master a skill, I'm like, okay, I'm done. Let's go to the next one. And, uh, and so that means that I have to challenge myself to be creative. I have to introduce new concepts and new ideas. So 
one of the reasons, for example, I love working with leaders is because every new problem becomes my new problem. And then mm-hmm. I get excited again. And then I'm like, well, let's solve that. And so I don't get bored this way. And uh, there's this variability in humans that I find fascinating. And so I get very, very fascinated and interested. And that makes my job fun. So I love what I'm doing. If I if I find too many patterns, then I just create a, a model. I write it down. And then I... I create a class around it, and then I get and find new problems that I haven't solved before. So this means that I know myself. So remember, knowing yourself, I accept myself. I accept the fact that I get bored easily. And so I I know that I need to be stimulated intellectually. I, <laughs> I'd look for those. I mean, I've been doing a PhD for fun in Thailand, because why not? I like to be challenged and uh, I am trying to always find things that stimulate my intellect because I know that I'm a smart person. I can't sit around doing nothing. And that works for me, but that, that may not work for you. So what is it that works for you? This is the real question. When we talk about leadership, I always say leadership starts with self leadership Mm -hmm. you manage yourself can you lead yourself first because whatever you have in yourself is how you lead people when most people when i get hired and there is a high level executive or a c-suite executive like usually their problems come from themselves first and are you a match to the organization are you having some personal issues that have never been resolved possibly and usually they haven't um, that you're bringing up to everyone in your organization and you're trying to hide behind those. So as we do this, we are creating this new paradigm where we are doing what we want to do. We see people who quit successful jobs just because they're not happy. And if their unhappiness got to that point where they just needed to leave, then I am like, okay, great. So have you created the new step for you? And more than that, we see a lot of people getting sick with weird diseases, right? We have a name for all these diseases that make no sense anymore because we're trying to explain, well, it means that you keep forcing yourself to do something you're not aligned with and you're trying to justify it and your body keeps saying no and you're ignoring it. So eventually your body says, okay, you're not listening. So I'm going to speak louder. And then you're like, oh my God, I have this weird disease. And well, it's the disease will go away and disappear as you're aligning with what is your purpose. Um, I'm in San Francisco today because it's been 20 years since my weird disease appeared. And, And the doctors are... And um, I've been part of a research study and they're like, we see no evidence of this disease anymore. I mean, we see evidence of the past, but not anymore. It's like, it's, you know, they they, they don't want to say it's amazing, but they say it's remarkable. And uh, I just smile and say, yay. Because that means that I am finally over the part that created the disease in the first place. And, uh, I have seen people who trade their health, and I was one of them who traded our health to be successful in something that was not the right thing for yet for us. Until we find it, we're just going to get more and more sick, more and more miserable until something breaks. And the fact that you're resilient and that you can keep on doing it does not mean that you're successful it just means that you're good at tolerating pain so <laughs> that's a good point <laughs> yeah I, I, go, ahead, oh, go ahead oh i i was saying that when i was in school like they will tell us that that it, it was a badge of honor to pull all-nighters to work really hard yeah. and it, it, it's almost if something wasn't working the modus operandi was okay work harder on this when in reality is work smarter 
work more aligned with your principles, your values, who you are. So then it becomes not work that is hard. It becomes work that is fun. So you're not burning out. Burnout is a real issue in our society. And people don't talk about it because, well, the people who burn out just go away. But that's not what we should strive for. People who go away usually end up being very sick and end up being very disappointed themselves. Yeah, uh, so many, so many great points. And maybe I, I know at the time I'm going to have to let you go here in just a minute, but maybe the last point I'll just make to reiterate it, essentially what you've been talking about. And that is, you know, we to know ourselves, that's the first step. And, and that may sound obvious, but that's, that's not easy to do. Uh, I think we often think we know ourselves, um, but, it, you know, everyone's heard the onion analogy. You got to peel back the layers. You got to peel back, peel back, peel back. And when you think you've peeled all the way back, peel back some more. Um, and I think that's a lifelong journey as well, just like we were talking about earlier on in the conversation. And there are so many layers put on us just through society and the norms um, around us and expectations put on us by those around us. So we may very well think that our values are X, Y, Z, because that's the context we live in. That's, you know, our community says those are our values, uh, you know, our family or just the norms around us say those are those should be our values. And so we think those are our values um, and we may live according to those values. But that doesn't necessarily mean those are are actually our values. Um, we and we won't know that until we start to peel back the layers of ourselves and until we really start to do the deep work and the deep self-reflection. And that actually is hard and it's a little scary sometimes for people to do that work. Um, and so it's it's not so simple to just say, just know yourself. Like that's actually hard. That's hard work. That takes a lot of time and energy and it, it takes consistency. Um, so I'll just reiterate that. I think that's a really important point and, and something we all can start doing today. Um, journal, um, do meditative practices, mindfulness practices, just make that a part of your daily um, work. And and, and, and and we can actually think of it as discipline. Yes. You can actually think of your practice as work. Yeah. If when we, um, I, I know firefighters, for example, or soldiers, part of their work is to work out. Why? Because they know that it's essential for their jobs to be in top shape. Well, what is essential for what your values are? So is it being healthy? Well, for me, being healthy is essential to my work. Like I need to be able to perform in in high yeah. level around the world. And there's no time when I can be off, especially as a speaker. Um, I can't just be having a bad day and just shut down. So in, in those times, I, I need to have practices that allow me to be in the best shape that I can be always. If it may seem easy, but leading a group, for example, for multiple days can be draining because yeah. I need to be on and I am the center of attention. So there, there's no point where I can start like not being present. So the, this is part of my job. So I consider exercise, I consider um, mindfulness practices, I, I consider practices that allow me to be um, taking care of myself, <laughs> even massages, I consider that a part of my job. And mm -hmm. it, I don't feel guilty when I have massages. Part of the reason I live in Asia is because they have the best massage. <laughs> and I love that. And I am not scared to say, well, you know what, I choose to do that. Very often you will see me like I will have three hour massages with a computer. Why? Because I'm working through the massage because I'm like, my body needs to be in alignment and I have work to do. And it doesn't mean that it's one or the other. And my massage therapist knows me very well. So then they kind of like work around my schedule and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Maria, this has just been a great conversation. Time has flown by. There's so much more we could talk about. We've only scratched the surface here, but um, as we start to wrap up, I just wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. 
Absolutely. So the the work that I do is very important. A very easy way for anybody to contact me is to find me on my website, mariakellis.com. And there's always a free tool there. And there's always a way to contact us. So Maria, M-A-R-I-A, Kellis, K-E-L-L-I-S.com. And uh, this will link to the various projects that I'm involved with. And uh, so we update the website regularly. Um, the final word that I want to tell people is be yourself. You are extraordinary. You deserve to be you. You were born to be you. Self-leadership is a principle that is a work that you can and a practice that you can bring into your life and allows you to, to be the best version of yourself for your company, for your team. Uh, when we are leaders, we lead by example more than just our words. If, if you have kids, you know that, that kids will copy what you do, not what you say. And so by being you, not, not just saying the words, by being the words, then you can be the best leader you can be. And that's when we see organizations becoming successful and results becoming extraordinary. So be extraordinary because that will translate to your team being extraordinary, your work being extraordinary, your performance being extraordinary. I love it. Maria, thank you so much. I encourage the audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Maria can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the podcast. We hope you stay healthy and safe and please join us again soon.